Welcome back to WWH. My name is Andrew Dreamer. If you're looking for a horror movie that's going to get under your skin and leave you questioning everything, you probably want to check out Long Legs. But fair warning, this one is weird, it's unsettling, and it's definitely disturbing. So join me and let's unpack this twisted nightmare together on this episode of Ringside Review. This past weekend, I had a free day and I decided to spend that day at the theater. I haven't had a lot of time lately to actually go out and see movies, so I jumped at the opportunity. I saw Deadpool and Wolverine, Twisters, and then finally Long Legs. I do regret, though, saving Long Legs for last because I was just absolutely exhausted by that time and I kind of struggled to stay awake. But I managed to make it and I've got to say, I absolutely love this movie. Now, if you don't want this movie spoiled, there will be a time in this video that you'll want to stop watching because I will run through the plot, but I'll warn you when that time comes. Think of this like a backstage promo before the match. But for now, let's just start with the basics. Long Legs was written and directed by Oz Perkins, who is the son of Anthony Perkins, you know, Norman Bates. It stars Micah Monroe, Blair Underwood, Alicia Witt, and Nicolas Cage as the titular character. And after this movie, I refuse to hear any Nick Cage slander. His performance is so freaking amazing. He's disturbing, mesmerizing, and just plain scary. He brings the over-the-top theatrics he's known for, adding an insidious creepiness that gets under your skin. And his physical transformation is striking with a gaunt frame and pale complexion. He moves and speaks in a way that exudes the evil and darkness within him. Micah Monroe's performance is equally captivating, albeit in a different way. Right from the beginning, you can tell she's not exactly a people person, but that works to her advantage. And if you watch interviews with her or see her in anything else, she's an amazing actor. She is nothing like this character, and that just shows you the sheer talent that she possesses. This has basically turned into the positive section of the review, and that's fine. It probably works better this way because I really am trying to be so careful with what I say. I, I don't want to spoil this movie at all. So let's just keep going. I adore the vibe of this movie. It is ostensibly 90s. The film's visual palette is awash in muted tones, evoking the era's grunge aesthetic. From the dingy rooms to the smoke-filled dive bars, the set design transports you back in time to... A time when serial killers dominated headlines and paranoia was palpable. The film's soundtrack, featuring a blend of dark wave and industrial music, further enhances that 90s atmosphere. The music throbs with an ominous energy, mirroring the unsettling nature of the narrative. It serves as a constant reminder of the lurking danger. Beyond the visual and auditory elements, Long Legs also captures the spirit of the 90s through the narrative themes. The film explores the anxieties and uncertainties of a generation grappling with societal change and technological advances. It delves into the darker corners of human nature, examining themes of isolation, obsession, and the pursuit of identity in a world that feels increasingly disconnected. By the way, don't forget to body slam that subscribe button so you never miss any of the heart-pounding, chill-inducing five-star matches we have here at WWH. We're not just wrestling with horror. We're delivering it to your screen every week. But as much as I love this movie, it does have just a few issues. There are some lapses in judgment by the characters, um, some leaps in logic. I don't want to go into too much detail right now about that, but there are definitely some things that make you go, what in the world are you doing? And I will admit that for some people, this movie is going to feel very, very slow. And, and I get that. It's a slow burn for sure, but that's by design. It doesn't really bother me here, but I can understand how that could hinder some people's experience with the film. Other than that, I don't really have anything bad to say about the movie. And with that being said, I do think it is time to move on to the spoiler-filled review section of this video. So if you haven't seen the movie yet or you don't want it spoiled, this is your cue to come back later once you've seen it. All right, let's head down to the ring. The film opens in 1970s in the Pacific Northwest where a young girl spots an unfamiliar car parked outside of her house. 
Polaroid camera in hand, she follows a mysterious voice beckoning her from behind the house. There she encounters a strange man with pale makeup, his behavior erratic and unsettling. This is Longlegs. It's our first glimpse of Nicolas Cage's character and we don't fully see him. And I love the way that this shot is framed. We, we see the lower half of his face and that just makes it even creepier. Fast forward a couple of decades, newly recruited FBI agent Lee Harker demonstrates an uncanny intuition in the field, correctly deducing that a nearby house is the scene of a murder. Unfortunately, her partner is killed after knocking on the door. Some subsequent tests suggest that she possesses clairvoyance, leading her to be assigned to a decade-long case of brutal murder involving families across Oregon. Each incident sees the father murder his wife and children before taking his own life, leaving behind a letter with cryptic satanic coding signed Longlegs. They're all obviously confused because it seems like it should be a serial killer committing all these murders, but is it? The handwriting matches none of the victims and there's no forensic evidence of forced entry or outside involvement. So what's really going on here? Lee quickly identifies a chilling pattern among the families. Each had a daughter age nine, born on the 14th of the month, and the murders occurred within six days of their birthdays. Plotting the dates on a calendar reveals an incomplete occult symbol, an inverted triangle with one date missing. After burning the midnight oil, she gives her supervisor, Agent Carter, a ride home. It's here Lee is introduced to his wife and his daughter, Ruby, who happens to have a birthday coming up soon. And there's a moment before they go in where he invites her in and she just replies with, do I have to? I've never felt something so much in my life. That's genuinely how I feel a lot of the time. And the thing is, I get that it can come off as kind of rude, but that's just how us introverted people are. We don't mean anything by it. While conversing with her mother, Ruth, later that night, Lee catches sight of a shadowy figure who leaves behind a ninth birthday card with a coded message. Using a Bible, Lee deciphers the text, which warns her that revealing the method will lead to Longlegs killing her mother. During this scene, there's a shot where Lee is sitting at her desk. And the way the shot is framed, we get a direct line of sight into the kitchen behind her. I, I kept waiting for something to pop up or creep in during that shot. It it's definitely my favorite shot of the film and a testament to the cinematography. Also, Throughout the movie, you can see this demonic looking figure appear in the background, and I thought I was crazy at first. But after it happened a few times, I knew what was going on, and I love that choice. Following a lead, Lee and Carter excavate a doll buried at a former crime scene. Inside its head, they find a strange metal orb emitting high energy despite appearing empty. While Carter remains skeptical of the supernatural, Lee proposes that each family received a similar doll from Longlegs and the orbs within are infused with malevolent energy capable of possession and influence. After visiting the sole survivor of Longlegs Killings, who recalls a visit from someone using Lee's name, Carter becomes concerned about Lee's connection to Longlegs upon noticing hints of shared knowledge. Discovering a police report filed by Ruth on Lee's ninth birthday detailing an intruder, Carter urges Lee to speak with her mother. It's here I started putting some of the pieces together at least as much as possible with this movie, I started realizing that Lee was that little girl from the beginning of the movie. She was visited by Longlegs. Lee visits Ruth, who claims no recollection of Lee's ninth birthday, but subtly guides her to explore her childhood belongings. And in her old bedroom, Lee discovers a chest that contains a stack of Polaroids. Among them, a picture of a pale-faced man reveals her as the girl from the beginning. Now aware of Longlegs' presence in her past, she submits the photo, enabling the FBI to track and arrest him. I haven't mentioned Longlegs much throughout the review so far, but he's been running around acting all creepy and pretending to be a cuckoo clock and screaming in his car. However, realizing the missing date on the inverted triangle is imminent, Lee fears Longlegs may have an accomplice. During interrogation, he reveals his allegiance to the man downstairs and urges Lee to question her mother's involvement before repeatedly slamming his face into the metal table, ultimately just dying. He freaking dies two thirds of the way through the movie. I knew something crazy was about to happen and the movie did not disappoint. Another agent, Agent Browning, drives Lee back to her mother's house. And as she investigates the house, she sees her mother murder Browning with a shotgun. Lee follows her mother outside where Ruth shoots a doll resembling a young Lee in the head. 
This causes Lee to pass out and lose consciousness. A narrated flashback unveils the sinister truth. Ruth has been Longlegs' accomplice since Lee's initial encounter all those years ago. That night, Longlegs returned to subdue Ruth, forcing her to make an impossible choice. Sacrifice her daughter to the ritual or become his pawn. She succumbed to his demands, leaving Lee as the missing birthday in the triangle. Ever since, Longlegs has inhabited the Harker basement, crafting dolls infused with his dark power. Ruth, disguised as a nun, delivered these cursed gifts from the church to the unsuspecting families who then fell under their evil influence and ultimately destroyed each other. Lee's doll had been suppressing her memories of Longlegs while subtly manipulating her with his sinister influence since childhood. Awakening in the basement, Lee answers the phone and hears a demonic voice proclaim, you're late for Ruby's party. Realizing it is Agent Carter's daughter Ruby's ninth birthday and that Carter's deaths would complete Longlegs' triangle, Lee races to intervene. When she gets there, Lee discovers that Ruth had already delivered the doll to the family who are all now possessed. After Carter murders his wife, Lee shoots and kills Carter to protect Ruby. Ruth then pulls out a dagger, forcing Lee to shoot her own mother and kill her. Lee raises the gun to shoot the doll, but her gun clicks empty to her disappointment. She tells Ruby they need to leave, but she can't move. She's stuck there just staring at the dang doll. And that is where the movie ends. I want to hear from you. What did you take away from this ending? What's your interpretation? Let's have a conversation about it in the comments. Look, I absolutely love this movie. I want to go see it again. I'm not sure I'll get the chance, but I absolutely want to see it again. During the scene where um, Longlegs is being interrogated, he starts singing and the agent says that he went on for like 24 minutes doing that. I got to know if that footage exists. I, I don't doubt that it does because it's Nicolas Cage. I can 100% see him sitting there for 24 minutes just singing this birthday song to Lee. And if that exists, I need to see it. But like I said, I absolutely love this movie. I cannot sing its praises enough. I understand that it's probably not for everybody, but this absolutely ticked all my boxes and I could not be happier with it. If you're interested in Redcon 1 products, I do have a discount code you can use to save 20% off of your order. You can also check out my merchandise, available at prowrestlingtees.com slash andrewdreamer. And if you're interested in supporting the channel in any way, check out the Patreon page. All of the links are down in the description. Also, if you enjoyed this look at long legs, be sure to like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the channel so you never miss out on any of the action here at WWH. And remember, in the squared circle of horror, there are no countouts for nightmares. My name is Andrew Dreamer, and this is Wrestling with Horror.